Cardinal Raymond Burke is here with a message of hope. And a prominent Vatican Cardinal has his conviction on charges of sex abuse overturned. Theologian and author George Weigel and trial observer John McCauley are here with reaction and analysis. Week. I'm Raymond Arroyo coming to you from New Orleans. A warm welcome to all of you joining us in the United States and the world over. We're delighted to be with you to share some news, inspiration, and much more in the hour ahead. Cardinal Raymond Burke, George Weigel, John McCauley, Father Robert Sirico, Father Peter Vasco, and Liz Lev. We've got an all star cast for you tonight. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send me a tweet. I'm at Raymond Arroyo. Lots to cover, but first, some news. On Tuesday, Australia's highest court unanimously acquitted Cardinal George Pell of five counts of child sexual abuse charges. The Cardinal had been convicted in December of 2018 and sentenced to six years in prison for those alleged crimes. In August of last year, a panel of appellate judges ruled two to one to uphold his conviction. On Tuesday, in a two-page statement, the High Court said it had found that, quote, the jury acting rationally on the whole of the evidence ought to have entertained a doubt as to the applicant's guilt with respect to each of the offenses which he was convicted and ordered that the convictions be quashed and that verdicts of acquittal be entered in their place. In a statement after his acquittal, Pell said, I hold no ill will toward my accuser. I do not want my acquittal to add to the hurt and bitterness so many feel there is certainly hurt and bitterness enough. The point was whether I had committed these awful crimes, and I did not." End quote. More on this later in the program with George Weigel and John McCauley. My next guest has followed the case of Cardinal Pell through the Australian court system from the beginning, oftentimes serving as a source to various news outlets. He joins us now from Australia. Welcome back to the program, John McCauley. John, the High Court wrote in its opinion the assumption that a group of choristers, including adults, might have been so preoccupied with making their way to the robing room as to fail to notice the extraordinary sight of the Archbishop of Melbourne dressed in his full regalia, advancing through the procession and pinning a 13-year-old boy to the wall is a large one. To what do you attribute the outlandishness of this case and the media furor surrounding it, John? Today, the Chief Justice took less than a minute to hand down a unanimous decision, and it focused on three points. The very fact that the Archbishop would spend 20 minutes on the foot of the cathedral after every Mass, the very fact that uh, the choristers would find themselves in a very busy cathedral, and also, importantly, the interim period of time for the Archbishop and the procession to get back to the sacristy. It was logistically impossible, Raymond for the things that have been uh, accused of the Cardinal to happen. And the High Court's finally come through with that decision and made it unanimous and emphatic in their decision this morning. What's been the reaction to the acquittal of Cardinal Pell in Australia, given the, Look, the media uh, pounding that, that he's taken really for years now? The country's more divided than ever um, on the incarceration of Cardinal Pell. That's largely a function of the fact that there was a suppression order during the trial. So all of the exculpatory ev evidence um, that was tendered in the court wasn't given any airtime by the media. The media only got onto this after the suppression order was lifted by the court. And therefore, it's only uh, been bad news for the Cardinal bad news regarding his story. And it's very important that people now actually look at the facts of the case and recognise that there has indeed been a travesty of justice, that Cardinal Pell spent 404 days in prison. Um, but tonight, he's actually spending his first night at a Carmelite monastery. Um, he's just had his first meal. It was a steak. And uh, he went on to say his first private mass in 404 days. Amazing. Yeah, George Weigel and I were just discussing. Cardinal Pell has indicated that he would like to remain in Australia, near family and friends. However, there have been death threats against him. Last month, a man was arrested for making a bomb threat against uh, Cardinal Pell. Is it safe for the Cardinal to remain in Melbourne or anywhere in Australia? Australia is a safe country. Unfortunately for Pell, 
Um, I would not recommend he walk the streets uh, even of our safer cities in the course of the months ahead. Just this morning, outside of Her Majesty's Prison, Barwon, as the media were gathered, I stood there and car after car, truck after truck would wind down their window as they drove past the front of the prison and say things like, hang thee, followed by expletives that I can't repeat on this channel. So the media has stirred up an extraordinary amount of hatred and I think uh, the safest place for him tonight is in fact in, in the Carmelite Monastery. By coincidence, he's in very saintly company, the relics of uh, St. Uh, Therese of Lisieux and her saintly parents, uh, Zelly and Louis, um, are in fact themselves in uh, lockdown under the COVID-19. They were meant to be touring uh, Melbourne this week, uh, but they were returned to the nearest Carmelite monastery. So he's in the company of some wonderful nuns, but also in the company of three great saints. You think he'll stay there? No, I imagine his visit there would be uh, for more of a, a spiritual uh, retreat to resume uh, the sacraments. Uh, I'm sure uh, he has expressed, obviously, his desire to stay in his hometown uh, here in the, the southern part of, uh, of, of Australia, uh, wow. Melbourne. But I, I can't imagine that being foreseeable. I do imagine him uh, needing to head uh, either further north or abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Australian Bishops Conference uh, put out a statement following Cardinal Pell's acquittal. It reads this way. Today's outcome will be welcomed by many, including those who believed in the Cardinal's innocence throughout this lengthy process. We also recognize that the High Court's decision will be devastating for others. Many have suffered greatly through the process, which has now reached its conclusion. The safety of children remains supremely important, not only for the bishops, but for the entire Catholic community. John, why so defensive? in what seems to be a case of gross injustice, not seems, is a case of gross injustice against Cardinal Pell. Solitary confinement, there have been horrible books written, sham documentaries. Is the church being too uh, conservative here in its reply? That, that particular statement from Archbishop Coleridge, the president of the bishop's statement, is one thing. But Rome itself came out a few hours ago and said that it had full justice, full faith in the Australian justice system. I can't understand how anyone could claim that today um, was a great day for justice in Australia. Mm. If the police had examined the material, they should have recognised the impossibility of this. The fact that Cardinal Pell has incurred millions of dollars in, in, in legal fees, the fact that a man has to go to these extents to demonstrate um, what should, be patent, should have been patently obvious at the very first police investigations proves that there's actually something deeply wrong with the justice system here. And I don't think the Bishop's Conference um, understand uh, that. I don't think even Rome understands um, just how much the Cardinal himself and now all Catholics have become fodder um, for the judicial process because now the media are no longer reporting um, on judicial processes, they're actually influencing the outcomes. They tainted the jury pool, pool in Melbourne, so we should not be surprised uh, at this outcome. Well, these bishops should take a hard look. Today it's Cardinal Pell. Tomorrow it's going to be one of them. Watch. Watch what happens. Is this the end of this Pell affair, if you will? According to the, uh, U the UK newspaper, the Daily Mail, despite walking free, the Cardinal currently faces 10 other potential civil lawsuits claiming that he either molested other boys or helped cover up abuse by fellow priests. Is this going to go on and on, John? If anyone had any evidence that Cardinal Powell had committed any indictable offence, which includes the non-reporting of child sexual abuse, they have had decades to present that material to the police. And in fact, if they did not do so or they delayed in so doing, they themselves are committing an indictable offence. So put up or shut up mm. is the message that needs to be put forward. And the very fact that that opportunity has existed, the very fact that Cardinal Powell has been very high profile from his installation as Archbishop in 1996 would suggest that uh, there's a lot of muckraking going on. But to be quite frank, I can't see um, there any likelihood of further criminal action. And I don't see any basis for there being any civil proceedings against him either. So I think there's a lot of distraction um, being created mm -hmm. because people don't want the key story to get out that an innocent man has just spent 404 nights in prison, falsely, falsely convicted. John McCauley, thank you for your insights and for tracking this case all along. And happy Easter. And to you.